I'm sure you remember the couple from two weeks ago. Well, sounds like it's former couple at this point. He went to live with his mom. Got the heck out of there. The trailer's full of mold and she's still hanging out with two kids wanting to buy the place. Yeah, can't quite wrap my head around that one. But they're back. And mom's kicking up some dust. Good morning, Your Honor. David Morris. I'm behalf of Pleasant Lake Park Plaintiff. Your name? Ryan Oberholicki. Caitlin Childress. Say again. Caitlin Childress. Okay. Now, where are we on this, folks? Your Honor, on December 31st, Your Honor, uh, set this again for today for a, essentially a status conference, I would call it, where um, there was... Um, it was brought to the court's attention that the property was uninhabitable, using that term in a general sense, um, and that Ms. Ch Childress, Ms. Childress and her two children should attempt to vacate the property sooner than the 30-day notice. And um, that's where we left it. I don't have any other information. Okay, and I think we gave you the information to Hawk and other things. What happened? Uh, me and the kids are staying next door. Pardon? Um, me and, and my kids are staying next door with the neighbor. Um, my son's finishing out this week. And then uh, my mom's getting me a truck. She couldn't get it until this week. So, I mean, by the end of the week, all the stuff should be out. I called Cock, but their uh, appointments are scheduled out until April. And then she emailed me a list of things to get a hold of. So... Of places to get a hold of to do that. All right. So, Mr. Licky, you're out of the premises. Is that correct? For the most part, I was just staying there temporarily, just helping her pack. That's it. But I, I'm my mom, pretty much. So, okay. And your mom's getting you a truck, and then that's supposed to happen Friday. You said. It'll, yeah, by this week. Uh, she right. works. She's off Sundays and Mondays. So if I have to be able to get out there earlier in the day before she goes to work. So we're still trying to figure out which day is going to work for her for me to get a ride down there to get the truck. Okay. And so it's anticipated that at some point you're going to be out of the premises. Uh, probably within about a week and a half. Yeah, everything should be out, removed completely. Week and a half of today, from today, or? Yeah, from today, about a week and a half. Ma'am, do you agree with that timeline? You think so? So by the 23rd? And if the property is vacated by the 23rd, then you don't, you guys are not going to have an issue with it going back to the landlord. No. Okay. That actually may work then. If you can try to do it by the 22nd, it would be appreciated. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to then adjourn this matter to February 23rd. At what time would I? I'll just put them into a regular block. And Your Honor, would would it be? Would you like to discuss the counterclaim and that sort of stuff today, or? Yeah, let me get to that. Two p.m. So it'd be February twenty third, two thousand twenty four at two p.m. All right. Now, as to the counterclaims that you have, what do you intend on doing with those? Uh, I'd still like to pursue it because it's it's. Pretty serious, though. Okay, so let me ask you this. Since we're really at a final settlement conference stage, um, Have you entered into any discussions with them about that? Um, I'm 
I mean, I've had communications, but they don't really agree with any of it. Well, let me ask this. Who owns the, the trailer? Got a pleasant, the plaintiff owns the trailer and the land, the lot and the trailer. Okay. So have you made any demand about what you want from them? Yeah. Is that correct, Council? You... I'm sorry, has he made a demand? Yeah. Well, he has filed an answer with a counterclaim um, and attached, it, it, it's not in, there was an email which listed the money yeah, damages yeah. and it, it essentially comprised one half I would call ruined property and the other half would be uh, uh, kind of a tort claim, a claim saying that, that that the plaintiff brought this moldy situation upon them and it damaged him, Miss Child, Childress, Child, Childress. Childress and the two children and made a, play, a prayer of, for relief of approximately $50,000. Uh, it's not, I don't know what the court's uh, record looks like, but it's not, it was not listed in the what I believe to be the filed supplemental answers to complaint, affirmative defenses, and counterclaim. I don't believe that there was a prayer for relief. Um, not a specific prayer for relief in that uh, document. Are there photos of these items you're claiming are damaged? Um, there's not photos of the specific items, but just from the mold specialist, he told us anything, wood, stuffed animals, toys, plastics, anything that it I, was. I, a... I understand that part. I'm just saying. Uh, I don't have pictures of like the dresser and stuff like that. I mean, I have pictures of like the carpet and. Let me ask you this. If I were to decide this, how do I know these items that you listed existed? I mean, that's it's not really, I mean, it's really just like stuffed animals, toys, a dresser is like the only I furniture item. What you're telling me. How do I know they existed? I get you, I get you. Okay. So we have an answer to that. I mean, I could preside pictures on the return court date if needed, but yeah, I was, I didn't know. I wasn't taking on that part. I mean, in, you've attached a value to these items. Right. How'd you come up with those values? Uh, pretty much, I just went like on Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, and I just, it, it's very reasonable. I pretty much just got like the median of what it would cost to replace it. Like even a dresser, I've only claimed like $60. I mean, you can get a dresser for $60. I mean, I don't need, you know, a $300 one or nothing like that. Well, no understand that if you're claiming that the plaintiff caused the damage, what you're going to be entitled to is really the value of the property destroyed. Okay. And so I would I think the thing you need to think about is this, that if you had a dresser that let's say is 10 years old, right? <laughs> Not gonna have a whole lot of value to it, right? Right. 
furniture typically doesn't have a whole lot of value once it's used. I see on the your list that there's carpet. Well, was that a rug or was it carpeting that was down in the premises? It's brand new carpet that we laid when we first moved in and the padding underneath. It was just in that one room. Okay. So how many years has the carpet been there? Probably just about a year. How much did you pay for the carpet? Uh, I couldn't, I don't have a receipt, but I attached a photo of the same carpet from... I see it. But it ran me probably about four hundred dollars ish. So what's the total amount you're asking for? Uh, from the damage claims or the whole thing? The whole thing. Uh, it came out to about roughly like 48000 ish And how much of that is damages? Uh, I'd probably say about around 1500 if I recall properly. I'm not 100%. 1500 in damages. The rest of it is what? Uh, mainly pertains to health issues, the environment we were in. I mean, that, that could have caused some serious issues. We were trying to get mold tested as well, but according to them, if the kids okay. came... Here's, here's one of the things you're going to have to look at. At some point, you know that that mold is there, right? Correct. And so at that point that you realize that there's something there, you can't just sit there. Oh, no. Once we notice the mold, we, I mean, we've been trying to move, honestly, for months now. It's just our sit Because with me being self-employed and, like, the requirements of places, it's... Okay, but you can't just sit there and have damages increase. I, I agree with that. That's why I made the landlord. Because it's the law. You have to mitigate those damages. So you're telling me we're trying to move. I mean, the last time I was here. Okay, so let's let me last time we were off. I don't know that there was an issue regarding mitigation because there were still people in the premises. Correct. But from the mold specialist, he could have serviced the property if just the people were out. Because he said he would even have to remedy, you know, the items that are in the rooms too or see what's savable and what wouldn't. So what does that mean? Like he could he could come in and remedy the entire property with just the human the people being out. Right. That doesn't seem to necessarily cut in your favor. Does it? I mean, I don't know. So why didn't okay, let me ask it this way. Why didn't the mold specialist come in and remedy? Because we were still in the property. Okay. So then the reason things did not get corrected is not anything having to do with the plaintiff. It has to do with you. That's no. what I'm talking about, the mitigation. 
No, the litigation or the remedy thing just was just brought an issue. They just had this done probably within the last month. The mold has been going on for almost a year now. Right, but you can't... <clears throat> You can't sit that there's mold. Right. At some point, you realize that there's some damage to you occur. Right? Right. But hypothetically, yes, we haven't been mold tested yet. But I, I understand. Yes. I don't know what you did. At some point, the kids have to get moved out of their room, right? Right. When did that happen? Uh, the beginning of last year. Okay. So at that point, let's just take that. You may have even known before that. Beginning of last year, you know that there is a problem. Mm -hmm. Right? Correct. So you can't. And this is what I'm talking about in terms of the idea of mitigation. If you had said at that point, okay, we're all leaving here. We're going to a hotel. Fine. But you can't then sit in that circumstance and then say to plaintiff, well, you're going to have to pay us for all of this because we just were sitting. You follow me? To a point, I, yeah, I do. Okay, what part don't you understand? I mean, when we brought the issue up, I mean, to me, it should have been taken care of right then and there. And we that wanna... may be true, but you can't then just sit and let the circumstance exacerbate itself and then claim everything in the world is plaintiff's fault. Well, I mean, I'm just a renter there. I don't feel like I, it's really my obligation to take care of mold or something that's out of my control. I'm not even saying that. At the beginning of last year, at some point, you knew there was a problem significant enough that you moved the kids, right? Correct. Right. So at that point, even if just for the sake of the kids. It would have been better if we just all moved. I, I agree with that. If you just moved someplace else, let's say you had gone to a hotel down the street. And then you're stuck in the hotel down the street because then at that point, the landlord won't fix it. You, you've, in a sense, mitigated your damages to the best that you could because you've done something because, as you're claiming, the landlord didn't do it. Right? right? But that's not what happened here. What happened here, it seems to me, is you continue to stay in a situation that may have then increased loss for you guys, right? Yeah. Well, you can't do that. I got you. So part of the problem, and one of the reasons I bring that up, is because you're claiming, it seems to me that some of the stuff you're claiming, I don't know when that was damaged. I got you. Put it another way, if you had said, this place is doing whatever, it's probably damaging all of our stuff, and you guys get yourselves out, you move to a hotel, you then get your property out as best you could, put it in storage, and then say, Mr. Landlord, you need to fix this. That's a whole different ballgame. I got it. 
but that's not what happened here. Back the mitigation. So, in, in, and again, even at this point, right now, as we sit here today, you still haven't vacated the premises. My point to all of that is, and I just bring up the questions, quite frankly, that the court would be asking, would be asking about the value of the property. What did you purchase it for? You know, if, if I had to decide this case, I have to first of all know that the property existed. Put another way, you can't all of a sudden claim landlords responsible for the diamonds that fell through the floor because they didn't fix the mold and there was a floor and so now the diamonds are gone. Same thing with the dresser. I have no idea whether it was there. No, I I'm presuming that there would be one, but I don't know. Then it's going to be the condition of that dresser. So that if it was just a cardboard box that we called a dresser, that's a whole different ball game than if I've got something that real uh, fancy, a thousand dollar dresser. <laughs> it's a whole different ball game. I understand. But that you need to understand that this is your counterclaim, and you're going to have to show that to the court. Right. On top of that, that's where it kind of gets to this mitigation issue. And that's what I want you to understand is that, and I'm just going to use the dresser. If I know that there's damage that's occurring to the dresser, and let's say I know it a year ago when you moved the kids. I can't then just leave that dresser there to presumably get more damage and then blame the landlord. I get where you're coming from. If I could have, if I, let's say this dresser was a thousand dollar dresser, if I can get the dresser out a year ago, do some remediation on it, clean it up, and now it, eh, it might only be worth 800. Okay, then maybe you can go to the landlord and say, yeah, you know, there was about 200 bucks of damage that occurred. To us. That's very different than the same scenario. I had this thousand dollar dresser. I just leave it there and let it get or just let it go to zero where I can't do anything with it. And then say to the landlord, you owe me a thousand bucks. Right? I get you 100%. The other thing that you're going to have to realize is in every, and I don't mean this badly, but it's just a state, every man's junk is their treasure. <laughs> right? There's stuff in my house that has a great deal of value to me. It has no value to anybody else. I don't know why, but it just doesn't. You're correct. So some of the stuff really, in all honesty, when you're talking furniture that's been used, yeah. almost can have no value in a lot of ways or very de minimis value. Carpeting, you know, You put carpeting down, paid about 400 bucks. By the time somebody starts walking on that, that carpeting is not worth 400 what you pay, right? Right? Then it's gonna depend on how many, what was the year rating on it? 
How long was that carpet supposed to last? Right. What was the damage? And then understand you're then going to get into that issue of mitigation. Could you have taken that once you know that there's a problem? Could you have taken that carpet out to preserve it in some fashion? You follow me? Yes, sir. Now, what's the other part of these damages you're claiming? Uh, the bulk of it is just like the health risks that were presumed to the premises that any, okay. anyone could have really gotten sick. Right. <clears throat> you so here's what's going to have. Here's what's going to have to happen. You can go get mold test. Right. Yeah. Once we're out of the premises, we already planned on doing that. Okay. So, what are you claiming came out of this for all of? Them? I mean, we don't know if anything, but I mean, I've been coughing like a lot more. I mean, my kid's been okay. Welcome to the land of COVID. <laughs> right. Go ahead. But my son's been, yeah, same thing, you know, getting a lot more sicker than often. I mean, I can't really prove that it was because of the mold. Okay, but listen, that's what you're going to have to do. I mean, if you're telling me that the landlord's responsible for that, okay, that's what you're going to have to show the court, which is going to require medical testimony going to require a whole lot of other things because even and I just want you to understand what you're doing even if you go get mold tested and a doctor comes back and says here's something in your system that we think is a mold you got to get this that, that doctor here to testify they got to have a basis upon which they're doing of which they're coming to that conclusion right Let's say you're successful in doing that, right? You're then going to run into that problem of mitigation because then did this problem, just presuming that there's an issue, did this problem happen because in the last six months? Did it happen a year ago? Do we not know when it happened? All of that stuff would have to be pinpointed. And if they say, well, this would have been something that would have developed for a year and just this constant sort of barrage of mold spores is what caused this. Well, then we get back to the thing a year ago when you know the kids are being moved. Why didn't you move yourself? And can I fairly hold the landlord accountable for that, for what may be that issue when you didn't protect yourself. I got you. Okay. There is then going to be this issue. So because I want you to be clear on what you're facing and what you're going to have to show them. There's going to be an issue of you came up with a number. Don't know where you came up with that number but also as to whether or not legally you would be entitled to that because this is really a, a contract case. So there's that huge legal issue that is also going to be out there. You follow me? So what I'm going to do is I had this set for final settlement conference because I was hoping that we could probably get this. But I mean, things were taking their own turn wherever. So it didn't work out as I planned. I'm just going to go to, you know what I'm going to do? No, I'm going to still give you the February 23rd day. And that's really regarding the surrender of the property, right? At 2 p.m. I'm also going to set another day so we can come back on a final settlement conference on the counterclaims.
you know, make that March 5th, 2024 at 9 a.m. Both dates. So this, we can do the 23rd by Zoom, right? And then the other one, I need you back in person. You're... Have you ever been through the discovery process? Core, okay. So, look. Let me just ask you this. All right, to both of you. What do you guys want from this? I mean, because, I, and here's the reason, you don't have to answer me, quite frankly, I, if you don't want to, but here's what I'm saying. I guess what I'm getting at is, you guys are gonna get here, because at some point I'm gonna set a trial, right? But even before we get to the trial part, there's gonna be discovery. They're gonna wanna know certain things that you're claiming. Right, and it, and I would imagine, although I'm sure counsel's probably a much better attorney than I ever was, so he might ask something else. But just the questions that I pose today to you is just a small piece of what they're going to be looking. And I just have a feeling, folks, you're going to have one of the most miserable experiences of your entire life. Now, if you want to go through that, that's fine. I'll be here. Right? I, but I think maybe and I don't know what the plain disposition will be, but maybe you should take some of what I gave you said to you today, come up with something that might be realistic and propose it to them to see if you can resolve it. I really don't think you guys want to go through a trial. If you want to, hop on, let's roll. But I don't think that's what you want to do. Follow me? Yeah, I respect your, your opinion too. Uh, well, I, I'm just telling you, I've been through a lot of trials. Even as a judge, sometimes I don't want to be there. <laughs> All right? And I know the litigants are having an even worse time than I am. All right? But, but you're just going to be there. You're going to have to you know, be answering questions, not just at trial, but before trial, to give them information that you may not answer. Because some of the questions I asked you today, you couldn't answer. And those are going to be the basics of what it is. All right. So I've given you those two dates. You guys need to think about what you really want to do. My big concern is you could probably get it from the last time that we were here was that there were these two kids that were in this place and they needed to get out. That was my main concern. Absolutely. Yep, I'm moving as fast as I can. Pardon? I said I'm moving as fast as I can. No, I, I, I get you, and I don't say it being critical, right? I, I it's from a father standpoint. Yeah, yeah, but... I'm, I'm a dad, <laughs> and I, it really was almost probably my mother challenging me or channeling me, telling me that, you know, and I put it this way in a colloquial sense. She said, there's a big, big people be damned. What about the little people? That's kind of how I looked at it. <laughs> All right. Those are the ones that needed to be protected. You guys have to figure out a way that you're going to be moving on. I'm going to suggest to you, if you want to come here, you can move, you can do it. We'll do it. But you guys just need to find a way to move on. Put this part behind you and just go about setting up your life and 
making sure to continue. But people don't follow my advice all the time, so that's okay. I guess that's why I'm here. Okay, so we'll see you guys then. You guys think about it, all right? And then we'll come back on those two dates and hopefully get it. Yes, go ahead. Yes, uh, <clears throat> Your Honor, um, there are some appliances. I don't know how many, but stoves, appliances being kept outside the, the property um, from the, the defendant's uh, self-employment. And I would request that... Um, yeah, that's that, that's going to be removed as long as with the trailer that's on there too. That's thank you, Your Honor. Okay, these are not appliances in the house. This is part of what you do. Yeah, it's it's like in a field tucked away. He gave me permission for it, but I understand why he wants it all removed now. Right. It's a separate there are appliances lot. in the field. Okay. It's a separate lot. That's fine. If vacating the premises means you're getting everything off of it. Correct. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. Appliances running through a field. All right. <laughs> Thank you, folks. Thanks, we'll see you a couple of Fridays from now. And now that is for, for Zoom, correct? Yeah, you can okay. you can either come to the courtroom or you can do it by Zoom. Okay. Either way. Thank you. Thank you. She needs to close her mouth for her to come back. Yes. Okay. Ma'am, can you go up to the phone? What's your name? My name is Diana Luck. I am Ryan Halicki's mother. And did you have something you wanted to say? It's well, you have a whole lot before when you were leaving. Yeah, because it just upsets me because I think it's kind of being pushed over to the material things and his property when in reality, this issue has been going on. I understand all of that, ma'am. I've been through every one of these hearings. But one of the things is, is that people may not like what I say or what I'm telling somebody. I understand but you that. Will always leave here in a respectful manner. I know. I have a big mouth sometimes. You do. I apologize. And that's why I could hear it. So I'm going to give you this. I'm just going to let you go with a warning this time. But if you come back and you act that way again, that gentleman behind you, that's who you'll be going with. Am I clear? Yes, sir. Thank you. You may leave. Thank you. I thought I was nice. And I just mm -hmm. like partner, power, you're all disrespectful. Or me. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. It's hard being me.